Right, uh, it's Johnny here from Pet Needs. I hope you're well. Um, I am with Frank Turner. How Hello. are you doing, man? I'm very well. It's good nice to see, see you. <laughs> it's um, good to see you too. It's quite weird seeing you with cameras pointing at us. I know, this is the first time that we're not drunk in a kitchen. Yeah. Um, but it's a nice Ever. place to be. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> We've always been in drunken kitchens for the rest of our adult lives. Anyway, yes, it yeah. is a, it's a lovely place to be. I w saw a sheep race earlier today. Did you? Yeah. Also, um, how good is Devon's biggest roller coaster? It is pretty good. That was amazing. <laughs> I feel like we're kind of living life now. I thought maybe. you were going to say living the dream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're getting uh, there. Yeah, I mean, I did, in fairness, I started playing guitar and joined bands when I was a kid because one day I thought maybe I could ride Devon's biggest roller coaster. And yeah. today, that dream came true. Well, congratulations. Man. Thanks very much, like, man. Yeah. This is pretty much my retirement party. This Living point. the so, dream. Yeah. It was it's amazing. Done. I peaked. I mean, home. Yeah, I think being <laughs> back playing festivals and stuff is a bit of a rush, but nothing nothing, nothing compares, compares to Devin's vigorous my, roller my, coaster. My guitar tech kept complaint. I made him go on it, and he just was sitting on the back going, Why am I here? The whole way around. <laughs> Our bass player, Rich, is exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very was, nice to be here, and it's, it's you know, yeah, it's, a, it's almost normal. Yeah, it's getting there. Thanks so much for having us along as well. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Like, I'm, I'm a big fan. You know this to be true. Yeah, thank now you I very much. On camera. It's, it's, it's mutual, yeah, man. It's mutual. Man. Um, why are we here? Where are we? And why we're are we in Biddeford. Um, we're here because there's a gig, an actual gig. I mean, it, this is worth talking about, actually. So last summer, when there was a sort of, sort of unlocking for a bit, there were a few people doing socially distanced outdoor shows. And quite a lot of people in the industry, it felt to me like they started to turn their nose up at it. Mm. And then there was another lockdown again. And I did them anyway, and there is, they, there is a bit of weirdness to it, but to my mind that's easily counterbalanced by the fact that it's live music happening again after the nightmare time that we've had. And um, you know, and then exactly the same thing's happening again this summer, as in like a few basically entrepreneurial promoters are out there doing these things, and a lot of other people are going, oh, I'm just going to wait until it's normal again. And this part of me thinks, well, you're going to be waiting a long time, and I, I want to play. Um, I want to do what I can to get live music back up and running again. So we kind of put together this little run of shows called The Gathering, and this is the first one. And all hail the people at The Big Sheep in Biddeford, because they were doing it last year and they're doing it this year. And if more promoters were just more forward thinking like that, there'd be a lot more going on right now. But whatever, we're here. We've got you guys, we've got Skin Lester, Semantics, guys, uh, and us, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to play in front of people again. It's going to be so cool. I know. Even if, you know, and they're in bubbles and they're a little way away and all that kind of business, yeah. but they're still there. I said they're like kind of in small circles of six, right? Yeah. So we could theoretically have kind of a hundred circle, circle pits, pits. mini yeah. circle pits. It's That's possible. the dream. That's the aim. That, is the, that is the dream. Okay. From the off. Right. Yeah. Good. Um, you put up an Instagram post today saying you slept on a bus and woke up next to a stage and it's kind of like a glimmer of old life yeah. coming back. Um, and one of the questions I had kind of like lockdown was kind of a time where it was kind of forced for us to kind of like take stock and reflect on life and reflect yeah. on where we've been in life and also reflect on where we want to go as well. And um, I just wanted to know, do you think that anything's changed in your attitude or your approach to music and touring going forward as a result of lockdown? Or um, or you jumping straight back in? Uh, well, I mean, I guess the first thing is the thing I've learned over the last year is that it's, there's not going to be a light switch day where suddenly everything's fine again, and I think there's going to be a long and bumpy and annoying road out of all of this. Um, you know, we will get there, but it's just, you know, we've had the setback here recently, and i um, doing the download pilot tomorrow, but there's a lot of kind of weirdness and I'm, lack of clarity about what isn't, isn't allowed. And, you know, I think it's going to be pretty stressful for people who work in the live music business for quite a time to come yet um, so I guess I'm learning patience about it I would say that I've learned gratitude uh, in a roundabout way just in the sense that like there were times I used to tour a lot and I will tour a lot again but like there were definitely times when I used to sort of idly speculate about you know taking you off the road to go and like live in live in Paris um, or whatever um, and I'm promised to never say anything that ludicrous ever again <laughs> Um, and I'm stick, you know, I love touring. It's my culture, it's my social life, it's my passion, it's my art, it's also how I make a living. Um, so, you know, I've definitely, I'm going to quote Johnny Mitchell because I can't avoid it, but um, nor, nor would I wish to, she's amazing. <laughs> but, you know, you don't, you don't know what you've got so it's gone, and I feel like um, I'm not going to take the whole of live music for granted. Even the day like today, you just show up and just seeing people. Who normally in the course of you see three or four times running into festivals and they just feel like yeah. it's quite tribal do you know what i mean mm. it's like touring people who i know and we're all wearing black hoodies <laughs> yes 
and uh, you know, and, and whatever else. And we all know about like how to do a sound check and how to ride to a show. And, and it's I don't know. It's just feels like my people, and I miss them. And there's definitely, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine a few months ago having a Zoom beer, which is a thing I wish I never have to do ever again. Um, and he would just said sometimes it feels like a dream that we once had, that we used to travel around the world and play for different people every night. And it was such a privilege, and I wish to get back to that very quickly, please. Um, you know, I, I've rearranged other parts of my life in the last year, but the essential thing for me is that I want to get back to being who I was. I want my life back. <laughs> yeah. Gone. yeah, 100%. Do you think that's influenced the uh, new album title? Uh, yeah, to a degree. I mean, I was sort of thinking, basically, I think what Lockdown's done in terms of the new record that I'm working on is it's kind of concentrated it a bit, in the sense that I was already thinking that I wanted to do a more sonically aggressive record, um, quote unquote punk, I don't know, um, if I could be asked to get into the argument <laughs> so that that word brings with it, but nevertheless, yeah, sonically aggressive. And I'd had the title, the idea of calling a record FTHC, flying around and this kind of thing. I think Lockdown kind of has just given me time to just really distill that and, and, and um, concentrate it yeah like I mean I had sort of 10 songs written in the start of 2020 and was probably gonna write another five and then call it a day and I wrote I've written 28 songs now for the new record because I had time and you know some of the stuff that will be on the final I haven't decided yet what's going on the final record we've recorded 16 of them um, but yeah it's kind of cool it's given me an opportunity to really knuckle down into what it is I'm trying to say but it's it's a record that's written to be played live in a sweaty room and, uh, and I intend to do that. Cool. And you recorded Rich Costi, right? Well, yeah, sort of. I mean, yes is the short answer, but we've ne not been in the same room together this time around because we did it remotely. We called him Polly from mm. Red Dwarf because he was just a place <laughs> on a laptop on Bounce Up the Mixing Desk, which was made considerably funnier by the fact that he doesn't know what Red Dwarf is or who Holly is. Or oh, really? <laughs> so we just kept nice. going, all right, Holly. And he was like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> we were in a residential studio in, in Oxford, just outside Oxford, and um, with an engineer who's a friend of ours. And uh, Rich was in Vermont in a studio, and we were slightly kind of met in the middle on the hours. We'd start at sort of 1 p.m., which was quite early for him, and work until pretty late for us. And uh, it was it was pretty cool, and you know we had um, there were bits that were done, other bits that were done remotely. The drums were tracked in LA by Elan Rubin from Nine Inch Nails, which is pretty cool. And talking about producing and stuff like that, um, just massive good, congratulations. Good segue, yeah, there we go. Look, yeah, there, there we, we go. Are. Well, I just want to talk about the big news now. Like massive congratulations on locking down being produced on the next Pet Intro. Thank you. Uh, this is my lifelong dream. That and it was that and the and, the, and Devon's largest roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> they were two the two. Things. Right, the um, Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. I'm very excited about it. I mean, yeah. Uh, I was actually I was chatting to somebody about this just out of minutes ago. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really sort of grateful that you guys gave me the opportunity to work on your mixing, your debut record, because I was very much at the beginning of my time. It's my debut mixing record yeah. as well, basically. And like, as far as I know, you guys are still happy with the jobs that yeah, I did, brilliant. but I, all I can hear when I listen to it is how I would do it better Yeah. <laughs> now, because it's a learning process that's going on. And I think that, um, and also, you know, uh, the guy you tracked with is called Tom. Tom did a phenomenal job in terms of working out arrangements and capturing sounds and that kind of thing. Um, uh, I'm excited to have a go at that side of it as well next time around um, and just kind of really dig into it. So, and you, um, um, you were saying you've done like 26 songs uh, for the new album. That's what you're making. Well, you're not making us do 26, you're making us do 15 yeah. first, which is a completely different way for writing yeah, an yeah. album for me. Well, like, you, yeah, I remember we had a conversation about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, write more, motherfucker! <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I think it's good. But don't don't stop at 16 as well. Keep going. We're doing it in November. Yeah, we're getting there. It's we're time. getting there. And you sat next to Stack kind up. of um, some of the world's best producers. Yeah. When you had less of an interest in producing. Yeah. And I know, I'm really moment. annoyed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading Facebook whilst Butch Walker was marking out the drum kit. I'm an idiot. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say, are there any, any moments that stick out where you're like, I wish I was paying more attention there? No, I mean, I was paying attention to the, I mean, I've always paid attention to the arrangement side of my music, obviously. It, I'm talking more about the kind of the, the minu technical minutia, mic placement, mic choice, compression, that kind of business. I didn't pay huge amount of attention to that in the past, and it annoys me that I did it because it's a very fine art. Um, but, you know, yeah, things like kind of arrangement, stuff like that. And, like, so working with Rich and working with Butch, two very different experiences. Rich is a very, very meticulous producer. Butch is much more in the school of, like, shove it, you know, plug a guitar into an app, shove a mic in front of it, we'll fucking sort it out, sort out the sound later and just play it well. And there's attractions to both approaches, I think. Um, so, 
so yeah, you know, I, I, I did, I have learned a lot from these guys. It's just there's a technical side of it which I could have paid more attention to. Cool. But I feel like I'm getting a handle on it. I've got some very nice microphones for you to try. Nice. I keep seeing on Facebook you're getting excited by gear. You're excited by a microphone that kind of, what, you can record around corners oh, or something? Yeah, yeah, I can record sound around corners now. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's a, right, it's a right angle of SM57. It's amazing. That's great. What's, it fills me with joy. Why is that good? Because it means that if you're trying to get a, a, into a certain placements on the drums, which you can keep out of the way of the drum, you can't Smart. mess around with how the way somebody plays an instrument in micing it up. That's ridiculous. So uh, the angle on it means that you can get kind of a steeper angle on the snare, or indeed just keep it out of the way of the sticks, whatever you want to do. Cool. And Sweet. indeed, if any sound is trying to get away from me around the corner. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, so <laughs> we're open for you. Tonight, it's amazing in Biddeford. Um, last question. Special guests. Yeah, there we go. Come on. There we go. Um, do you have any advice for? What's your best piece of advice for a support fund trying to win over a Frank Turner crowd? <laughs> uh, be yourselves. I mean, I don't. I, I always choose my people I play with, and I choose them because I think they're really good. Um, so do that. <laughs> be good. No, I mean, but just be yourselves. I think you guys are great. In fact, the first gig I saw this year, and since lockdown 7.9, there it is, and it was you guys doing the gig set in Colchester, and it was great. Let's do that. Sweet. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, be friendly, talk to the crowd. But you do that anyway. You don't need any fucking advice. <laughs> Shut up. There we go. Yeah, we can cut there. That's the end. <laughs> so this is Frank Turner. This I'm is Johnny. Johnny. Yes, this is Johnny from Pet Needs. We'll do that again. This is Frank Turner. This is Johnny Marriott. Am I allowed to say your first surname? Uh, yeah. All right, there we go. Well, I could avoided. say it's yours. Okay. Do it one more time. <laughs> this is, right. I'm not going to cut any of it. This is Frank. This is Johnny Marriott from Pet Needs. Um, we Turn are at Biddeford. <laughs> We're a bit of a big sheep. Gathering. World's biggest Devon's roller coaster. <laughs> the world's biggest Devon roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, a wrap. <laughs> Amazing. Good shit.